Math 142, and this is going to be from section 5.1. We're going to talk about the unit circle. And the unit circle is going to be um, something that we use in this course over and over and over again. It's going to be a good, good center for us, a good way for us to think about uh, trig functions. And right now we're just going to talk about the unit circle itself. So the unit circle is just a circle that has a radius of 1. We'll put it center at 0, 0. So um, if one thing we could think about is the equation for this would be x squared plus y squared equals 1. So it has this center at 0, 0, radius of 1, and it just sweeps out, and it hits all these, these points along here. And um, every, every point on the unit circle is a solution to this. And a nice way to think about that is, you know how we go over x and up y? We always have a right triangle here. If we, we always just take this line back down to, or back up to the x-axis. x squared plus y squared equals 1. So that, that will always be a thing on the, on the unit circle for us. If I had the point root 3 over 3 and root 6 over 3. Uh, they're both positive, so that would be here in the first quadrant. You know, I could label these quadrants, right? Like, this is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant in here, this is the third quadrant in here, and this in here is the fourth quadrant. So I have, if I have this point, I want to know, is that a point on the unit circle? Like, it would fall, if it did fall, since these are both positive, x is positive and y is positive, it would fall somewhere in here. But would it actually be on that line? And the way I can check it, one way I can check it is plug it in. So x squared plus y squared. And does that equal 1? If it does, that'll be a point on the unit circle. So let me see. If I square this, uh, the square root of 3 squared, uh, that's the same as square root of, of 9, which is just 3. So this would be 3 ninths plus square root of 6 squared is 6. 3 squared is 9. Uh, that's 9 ninths, which is 1. Yeah, so that would be a point on the unit circle. Let's say that I had, uh, I know that the x part of the point is, is negative 4 fifths. I want to know the y part. And I'm going to tell you it also falls in quadrant 3. So it falls somewhere in, in quadrant 3. So it's back negative 4 fifths. But then it would also have to be down a certain amount. So one thing I know is that this y value must be, must be negative it, to be in quadrant 3. Because notice if my x value is negative 4 fifths, I could have a positive y value or a negative y value. So let me figure out what it would be. So I know that negative 4 fifths squared plus whatever y is squared should equal 1. So if I square this, it's going to end up being positive. So 16 20 fifths plus y squared is 1. I could subtract that 16 20 fifths from both sides. 1 is, is 25 20 fifths. So it would be like 25 20 fifths minus 16 20 fifths, which is 9 20 fifths. But that's what y squared is. So if I square root that, it would be 3 fifths plus or minus 3 fifths. So notice if it had been plus 3 fifths, my point would be up here. But it, I want it to be in quadrant 3. So it should be negative three-fifths. So let's do another one uh, like that one that we just did. So we know that the x component of the point is seven twenty-fifths. It's going to be in quadrant four, which is down here. So it'll be over and down. It'll be somewhere around here. And we want it to be on the unit circle. So uh, we know that seven twenty-fifths squared plus something squared, I'll call it y, will equal one. So 7 25ths squared, let's see, 7 squared is 49, uh, 25 squared is 6 25. We could subtract the 49 6 25ths from both sides. And let's change this one into having the same denominator. So this is 625 625ths uh, minus 49 of them. So let's see, uh, 6 25 minus 49 is 576. I wonder if I square root that, what I'll get. 24. Cool. So uh, y squared is equal to that. So y would be plus or minus, um, 
right? Because I'm going to square root it. The square root of that is 24. So it's either the plus or minus 1. And since it's in quadrant 4 and it's the y value, it's going down. It must be the negative version. That would be the negative 24 25ths. Let's try one more like this. So the x component's negative 2 7 so it's back. We want to know the y, and it's in quadrant 3, so it's going down, so this will end up being negative. So let's set this up. We want this point to be on the unit circle, so we know that. So if I square this, it'll be positive. 4 49ths. We're going to subtract that 4 49ths from both sides. Uh, the 1 is 49 49ths. I'm just doing that so I can do the subtraction easily. And that's going to be, what, 45? And now if I square root that, I've got the square root of 45 over 7. 45 is 9 times 5. So I can simplify this. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5 will just leave as root 5. Through root 5 over 7, that's the magnitude, the size of it. And I know it should be going down, so it should be negative. So we can identify points on this if we just have a little bit of the information. So let's start connecting it to um, angles a little bit then. Uh, where, what points would fall from which angles? So if I do a rotation of, of pi degrees on this, so that would be to here, basically 180, um, that point, what, what are the coordinates of that point? Well, I know the radius is one, so this is back 1, up and down 0. So pi terminates at the point uh, negative 1, 0. Or if I think about uh, negative pi over 2, let's see, negative pi over 2, that would be a full pi rotation, so this would be negative pi over 2 right here. Again, that radius is 1, so this would be the point 0, negative 1 starting to kind of get these these points on here 90 degrees would give me uh, 0 1 2 pi 360 0 degrees would all give me 1 0 so I've got some some points established on here connected to some uh, connected to some angles so let's talk about maybe 45 degrees where might 45 degrees terminate well, let me think about this. If I had a 45 degree with that radius being 1. So this connects back to the 45, 45, 90 that we talked about last time. Um, you might remember that if this is 1, this is 1. These are 45. That triangle is terrible. Sorry. If these are 45s and those are 1, that's square root of 2. So one thing you could do to get at this is you could divide everything here by root 2, like scale it down by that. And remember, if you rationalize that denominator, that's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So if this radius is 1 in a 45, 45, 90, this distance, this x distance is root 2 over 2, and this y distance is root 2 over 2. So if I had this 45 degree angle, I can just think of putting that triangle in there with that radius of 1, the x value is root 2 over 2, and the y value is root 2 over 2. That's, per, that's great. And notice that it's not just for 45 degrees. 45 degrees is pi over 4. So if these were, if these were pi over 4s, it's the same thing. So this 45 degrees, or pi over 4, terminates there. Now, knowing that actually gives me a couple other points on here. So, for example, if I think about this right here, this that comes uh, like 180 from here. Notice this angle here is, is 180, but then this right here, if I pull this back to here, and I think about this triangle where it comes back to the x-axis, always come back to the x-axis, that would be 45 degrees uh, more. So that whole angle is 225. So that entire rotation is 225. So notice that 225 terminates at a certain point. And what I can do is just take this 45, 45, 90 angle and put it in here. 
this side is root 2 over 2 long and this side is root 2 over 2 long, but they're both negative. So this would be the point negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And I could do that with anywhere I can, I can put in a little 45, 45, 90, or, or, a, or a pi over 4. Uh, let me think about another example of this. Um, how about if I had 135 degrees? That would be about here. 135 degrees. Notice that I drop that down. There's my triangle. This angle here, since this is 180, is 45 degrees. So I still have these sides of root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So this would be back root 2 over 2. So my x part would be negative. And then up root 2 over 2. So my y part is positive. So I can def identify all these, uh, these angles that make a 45 degree angle back to the x-axis. I can figure out the point that these terminate on. I want to do that with my other benchmark triangle, which is my 30, 60, 90. So let me clean this up. So if you remember back to that 30, 60, 90 degree, we had, um, if this was a 2, this was a 1. And then uh, this side over here ended up being a square root of 3. But in the unit circle, the radius is 1. So let's scale this down. Let's divide everything by 2 here. And so notice if we do that, now we have uh, this 30, 60, 90. We know some x and some y values. So for example, if I just wanted to know where 60 degrees terminates, I can just think about lifting this and putting it in here because that's my 30 degree angle. This is one over one half up root three over two. So this point would be one half root three over two. Or if I did it with uh, say 30 degrees instead of 60 degrees, that'd be more like this. Notice that I'm, what I'm doing now is, is I'm taking this and I'm, I'm kind of rotating it. Um, not even just rotating, I'm also flipping it. Um, but if I line it up this way, so my 30 degrees is down in this bottom left-hand corner. Oh gosh, that's horrible. <laughs> Sorry. Still have the 1, but notice opposite the 30 is 1 half, and opposite the 60 is root 3 over 2. So that means this would be going over root 3 over 2, up 1 half, so this would be the point negative root 3 over 2, 1 half. And, and um, 30, 60, 90, remember that's also equivalent to, um, you could do that in radians as well, and you would get um, same, same ratios. So let's think about, for example, let's say I had um, 150 degrees on here. That would be about here. And so since this is 180, this little angle in here is 30 degrees. So drop your triangle, drop it to the x-axis, always to the x-axis. And notice that opposite the 30 is 1 half. So this is up 1 half. Uh, opposite the 60 is root 3 over 2. But that's a negative direction. So my point would be negative root 3 over 2, 1 half. And one of the things that I'm going to ask you to do in the practice is to... Uh, Find these, these uh, points for any 30, 60, 90 you could put in here and for any 45, 45, 90 that you can put in here. So give the, uh, give the practice problems a try. Take a look at what it says in the chapter and send me, message me any questions that you have through WAMAP.